Good morning. Hello. Madhav, I know it takes all of your strength to say good morning. I know you just want to say good evening. Yeah, it's 7.30 p.m. here. Yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, well, hey, we're just a couple minutes after. I just slacked everyone a reminder about the meeting, but from my perspective, hey, there's no time to waste, actually. Let's, let's start talking about stuff that you're working on and uh, others will join as and when. Yeah, sure. Nice. Um, so yeah, actually, if you if you want to lead us off, uh, feel free. Uh, um, which which yeah, what are you currently focused? Yeah, I'm just solving this issue of the copy to clipboard one. So just I'm doing searching some way to add that button, hover button. So that's it. Garish, did you did you catch that? My speaker was too low, and I I missed it. Yeah, I, I did get like you know, he was talking about uh, some power power stuff. Are you able to hear me? Yep. Okay. I mean, I, I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> uh, but I uh, some power stuff. No hover. Oh, hover stuff. Yeah. A oh, button yeah. hover. Yeah. Yeah. So Madhava, do you, is there something you might demo? Have you been able to advance since last time we spoke? Yeah, I can show you. Nice. Just wait a couple of minutes. Let me open this. Can you see the space? Yes. So I'm what? working on this. So I so I'm thinking to add a button above here, which will copy all three lines. Okay, uh, over here. Okay. And again, again. Hello. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again, I will uh, add more three button, which will individually copy this, these lines. So I'm working on that. Oh, interesting. So kind of one, one button at the top that will copy all three lines. Yeah. Again, individual button uh, in here, in those areas, it will copy the individual line. Okay. <laughs> You're, you're uh, very, got it. Um, you know what, it, you will, I'll tell you this, it will have been a success if you make it as far as just that one button. Like th that will be a success in so much as we'll have facilitated the convenience of copying from mouse to click clipboard. And then the other bit about the individual lines, uh, they can always just hi highlight and copy themselves. So even if you only got that far, that would be, um, that'd be awesome. We, we, we would want to merge that capability. Okay. Okay, I will do that first. I will create one button uh, over here and go for the PR. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, has this one been um, difficult, do you think, or, or is this a good, about the right type of a challenge? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm solving. I'm learning with this type of issue. So, that's good. Okay. And um, you mentioned last week, I think, that you're using Clipboard JS. As a the like CDN. the library, so to speak, for this. 
Um, any, it, oh yeah, the CDN for um, Clipboard JS, which is great. And so, uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, I, don't, I guess I don't, Garish, do you have any other feedback here? I, I think like hey, once we get one button that copies all three, we're good to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I was under the assumption that's what he was going to be doing. Yeah, I was a bit puzzled too, like, you know, when he had the previous copy buttons, individual ones. So, so yeah, I, th I think that'll be a good one. Yeah. Well, then, uh, Mata, uh, so moving off of this issue and maybe on to um, the next one, do, do you have, do you know which one you have lined up next? Yeah, um, this one, no? This yes. section, uh, awesome. I have to add this. Icon. Nice. Okay. Very good. Um, I think last time we spoke, I know we talked about the social icons that are either at the bottom of this screen or they're at the top of the screen and potentially just leveraging those. My, I guess my offer, my offer still stands that if, I want if we need uh, colorized versions of those that I can um, help with that. I tend to think that the uniformity of color on this page makes it a bit drab. Uh, and so putting more buttons, you know, using, using those same buttons, I think it's good, uh, but maybe they need to be colored. So I'll. Uh, and so maybe that, that would help. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, that seems that seems like a relatively straightforward addition as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna push the envelope here and say and ask, what's next after that? Do you have a, another one lined up after that? And Subham and Nikhil, I know you guys have joined, so uh, just uh, we're about to get to each one of you. And so it, just prepare if you have something to demo, um, get that prepared. And then um, if you don't, then just prepare to talk about uh, a particular design. Hello, Lee. Hey, yes. Uh, actually, I have something to ask. Uh, I was doing uh, Git, uh, GitHub Webhook and AWS Lambda. Oh, yeah. Uh, then I got some issues like when uh, I was trying, I got issue like uh, server, server. Uh, AWS uh, access, so I don't know how to solve this, uh, but uh, I was using my debit card for this, and I think uh, this error is due to I have used uh, debit card instead of credit card. So I don't have uh, uh, credit card, then I don't know how to do this. Right. You know, I. Um, so. Let me let me share real quick. Um, I think what we're actually finding is um, no. Who, who asked that? No, actually, Subham, you you cut out about halfway through, but I understood what you were saying in part because you had texted it, you slacked it before. Um, so if we look up the AWS free tier for Lambda. If you're using a free tier account within there, there's a free number. There's like a, a million requests a month that are, are free to execute. Uh, and, and so it, it's not that, or my perspective is, it's not that you need to have a credit card as much as, well, they may require that you put a credit card on file when you create an account. That might be true. 
but they sh they wouldn't charge the credit card until you surpass a million requests a month. Um, yeah, I think that that is true, actually. And so, but of the message that you were getting, I'm not, I am not entirely, just from the, the message that you texted over, I'm not entirely sure if that actually has to do with a credit card or if they're talking about a subscription like, um, as one service subscribes to the next, subscribe not in the monetary concept, but more like one is related to the next. And so when an event triggers, there's a Lambda subscribe to that kind of a thing. Like, <clears throat> um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps. I think that, yeah, I think it's, it's probably true when you create a, a free tier account, they probably are gonna require that you give them a credit card. Um, but they won't charge it unless you're uh, spending more than the free tier limit. Um, okay, so hopefully that helps on, on that one. If Subham, maybe since we're talking to you, maybe if we switch to um, any other issues that you're working on. Oh, okay, gotcha. I see your chat now too. Okay, and so that's the one issue that, that you're currently working on. <clears throat> um, okay, I guess hold that thought. We probably wanna come back to you, Subham, and uh, find an additional one. Uh, and Garish, maybe, you know, Subham had expressed a desire to enhance some of his DevOps skills in the past. And so he and I had discussed a little bit of uh, infrastructure type work. And so the item that he was working on here was to help facilitate uh, tracking for the community, for the project, such that whenever, and th in this case, it was to be. Um, a GitHub webhook anytime that someone starred the project, that that webhook would hit an AWS Lambda endpoint and uh, would then send an email or do, do something, you know, let, us, let us know, send a Slack back to the channel or something. Um, so that was what he was working on. Understanding that he wants to do some things like that, as you look at GitHub actions or as you look at like the build and release process, Give some thought as to whether or not there's a, a place for him to jump in there. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, and then Subham, we'll circle back to you in just a moment with some other um, other items. As a matter of fact, uh, Garish, as we think about um, him doing more in Go, um, I know we've got some pro we, we, with our protobuf changes. We've got to take some of those changes to other adapters. There may be some things that he could could do there, you know, in terms of taking that change across. Okay, and then, uh, all right, very good. And so we have uh, Moto G5 Plus. Who, who else joined? We have Modub, Subum, and who else? No. And so I think whoever dialed in on their, their cell phone, we can't hear you yet. But you can chat in the Zoom or Slack if you want. And Subham and Madhub, you guys don't know who has a Moto G5 Plus, do you? I think it's Nikhil. Oh, Nikhil. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, 
And Nikhil, for whatever reason, your audio isn't coming through. Um, let, let's, let me go back to sharing for just a moment. So we, we went through Modub stuff. Yep, it's Nikhil uh, having an audio issue. Okay, you're gonna drop and come back, okay? Okay. So while Nikhil is coming back, uh, let's go take a look at some of the outstanding issues and see uh, if, if there are things we should be talking about. Oh yeah, so Mata, I was giving you a hard time and saying, okay, after, after you have the beautify sec, after you've beautified the contribution section, what's next? Um, I know we talked about this one before, and so I think you're okay with your approach to this one. And, but just, uh, just to double check, any conceptual questions or any implementation questions that you have on this issue? Actually, I have not started this issue. So when I started this issue, if any question like this, I would surely ask. Okay, nice. Well, then, you know, th this is a good time for us to, since we have the time together, it's good for us to maybe talk about it so that you're, you're comfortable. Um, yeah, yeah. So rather, so rather. Right now, I think I have not started this. I don't have any idea about this. So if I have started this issue, then may, may a question arise. I can surely ask you. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll explain it real quick so that it's somewhat familiar to you. Uh, so the issue is in Mesh Read. And what it's, what it's asking, what it's saying is that we have the Mesh Read docs and that there will be the occasion where someone is reading the docs and they find a typo or they find something that needs to be added. And ideally, we would facilitate them helping us keep the docs up to date by having a small link kind of at the bottom of every page or at the very top of every page, probably the bottom, that just says something like edit this page. And when they click the link, uh, they would be directed to GitHub to the specific page inside of the docs. <laughs> Excuse me, for that particular thing. So if they were looking at Minikube um, and they found an issue on the Minikube page, they might find that, that something's missed, that, you know, they need to update it. So they, they click edit this page, they'd be to redirected to um, this URL in GitHub so that they can continue from there. It might even be, they might even be directed to, yeah, I don't know. They might even be directed to this particular link here, edit this file just to take them all the way to the end. But in order to ensure that they get the, that every page has the right link going to the very specific page, uh, there's a bit of Jekyll that needs to be included. I'm sorry, a bit of uh, a couple of um, variables. And so th this right here is an example of what that could look like. So when you, when you create the hyperlink, edit this page, the variables that might be combined to, to make that would be basically a link to the GitHub repo. In this case, the example is using a site-wide parameter. Site-wide parameters are kept in the config.yaml file, the Jekyll config.yaml file. And so that would just be a link to github.com slash layer5io slash meshery. Okay. And then this file path is a well-known Jekyll global variable, if you will. 
that at the time that Jekyll builds the site, it will populate uh, this variable appropriately for each and every page. Uh, so yeah, so as I think this one, when, after you get in there and wrap your mind around it, I think it's uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, well good. Uh, with that, I know um, Nikhil, you might be in a better position to talk now. Yeah. yeah. Hello again. Actually, I was having a bit of issue with the app and all. So I just configured in my laptop. On the oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. It was just a bit of issue with the bandwidth in the phone. So I was not able to, my voice was not audible. Sorry for that. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. And so, um, Nikhil, I'm trying to remember. Last time we talked, did you did you have an active assignment that you were working on? Did you have anything that you want to demo today? No, not nothing right now. Actually, just figuring out that issue with the doc space. Not able to get it till now. Just nothing. So I just I was hanging out in the wild in the week. So I found two issues related to UI. So I just got the solved it and I'm ready. Nothing new I'm working on right now. I remember the docs UI issue. And yeah, I also remember every time that we merge a PR on the Meshery repo, there's, there's this warning email that GitHub sends send, saying that it doesn't recognize our theme, the theme that we're using for the docs site. The name of the theme is Read the, is it read the docs? Yeah. And so I think one of the ideas that Garish had was to uh, clone that read the docs repository, clone those, copy all those files over to be locally deposited into the meshery site. And then that way we wouldn't have to use the, the line in the config YAML that says theme read the docs. And the reason for the line in there is so that whenever Jekyll builds the site, and in this case it's GitHub's Jekyll that's building the site, it needs, it needs to dynamically reach out to that particular theme, pull in some files and, as it's building the site. And if we just, maybe take care of that on its behalf, then maybe we won't have that issue. I, I, it's just a guess that that might be why we're experiencing the difference between how it looks locally and how it looks on github.com. I think just because recently the Jekai got updated, it may be a reason I don't know that because of that, the team is not working properly when it's posted on the time. I, th I think I heard what you said, which is, Maybe the other, or, um, the other thing that could be causing the issue is that Jekyll was recently updated? Yes, 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 right. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's worth a shot as well. Okay, nice. So, yeah, so Nikhil, yeah, you know, I, I would say, you know, Try both of those issues. Probably the one that you mentioned is easier to do and an easier test to complete. Actually, I didn't get what to do. I will say it again. Actually, I didn't get what you said to oh. resolve. What the what the issue? Oh yeah, L let's let's try to solve the issue with your suggestion. If you submit a PR that has an update to the Jekyll version that we're using, that's the easiest um, thing to try. Okay, it's the last comment that I made regarding the menu button. Yeah, um, 
users. Nice. Okay. And then, so Nikhil, we need to get you on to a different issue. And actually, Garish, I don't know if you can answer Subham's question in the chat. But uh, so Nikhil, uh, let me share my screen again. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at some of the open issues that we have. Um, One issue I saw, saw was regarding that notification. Something the operation completed successfully and operation submitted successfully. I was hoping to get into that. Okay, nice. Yeah, do you remember? That 219, hash 219. Confusion between operation submitted and operation completed. Ah, okay. Yeah. The, Garish, you, you didn't knock this one out already, did you? This is still no. okay. All right, cool. Yeah, let, let's talk about this one now. That sounds great, Nikhil. Um, yeah, so. Actually, Nikhil, I think you probably understand the issue. Do you, do you want to talk about your approach and, and or, or any questions you have as you think about the approach? No, actually, I just think uh, we need to change the text and add a new color to the text depending upon the notification that is coming. Okay, nice. Yeah, if you do change the text, it might just be enough to remove the exclamation mark uh, because in English, what, because what we're really trying to convey to users here is that they took an action and here's a receipt for your action. It's sort of like, it's just an acknowledgement that um, you press the button and the system has taken your request. It's just this quick notification that says um, your operation has been submitted. And so uh, it, it's not, it, it would be inappropriate to indicate to the user that like, this is an exciting event, that something has been completed and it's done. And, and, and that's kind of the issue with it right now is that it's showing this to you in green, which people usually mean, take to mean like, hey, everything's great, we're good, it's, it's done. The exclamation mark means that it's exciting and um, it probably means that it was, you should be happy as a lot of times the emotion that comes with that. Uh, and the check mark here, that also indicates to people that, oh, something's done, it's completed. And so um, I should get more explicit in the issue, but there's probably either three or four things that we should do here. One, we should not, we should find a different icon instead of a check mark. Because the check mark makes, it looks like it's done. That's one. Two, we should not use an exclamation mark because that, we should use the exclamation mark after it's been done successfully. Um, three, we can, and so instead of using the exclamation mark, we can use a period. But, but three, instead of saying successfully, we can just say operation submitted, period. And that, that way it's not exciting. It's still a notification. Um, and instead of, and I guess four, instead of using the color green, it could just be white or light gray or potentially dark gray, it, it, somewhere between, somewhere in the grays. <laughs> Probably good. Okay. I'll see. Nice. Uh, so I need to go. I need to go uh, update what this says. But it sounds like that makes some sense. And and I, I think of the React work that you've done already. I think you're well positioned to take this on. That that sounds great. Yeah, yeah I'm also studying React nowadays. So I look at. Oh yeah, wait, I missed that last part you said. 
I'm studying React right now. I was just uh, studying React, learning how it is. So I will do good. Try and give a shot. Okay, very good. Um, so, so let's talk about one or two others for you then, since I think, since I wouldn't be surprised if you knocked that one out before the next time that we meet. On this item, Garish, of this particular bug, I think you've addressed this one already. And it's just yet to be merged. And so I'm going to go ahead and put your name. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay, we go down. Um, so, um, I think Nikhil, I think you already knocked this one out and we just haven't closed the issue. Yes, 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 I've done it already. Okay, cool. Has anybody, I think you probably, you verified, right? Has, have you gotten feedback from anybody else just yet? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, let me take that as an action item. I need to, let me just go quickly verify it. Um, that's great. Right? Okay. Um, and I think, um, speaking of verification, Subum on your issue where you're using XDP open, uh, has Anand given you feedback there? I think he's been working in this area. So, um, Nikhil, here's another one that you might be able to take on. Yes, but actually, when uh, I saw this, but when I tried to zoom in, I saw that it was fine. So oh. It doesn't show me misaligned. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't even able to reproduce this uh, when I tried looking at that time. Yeah, it's it's just prominent in your computer, like you know that's. Oh, that's how it's gonna be. Huh? That's how. That's what. Me, because I tried to see, I wasn't able to see anything like that. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was properly aligned in my notes. That's true. Yeah, actually. Um, is this is this only in Safari, or are you also seeing it in Chrome? Yeah, in Chrome. Um, uh, both. I, I uh, made sure to do that so as to get us the right feedback. Um, let me let me show you in Chrome here. Oops. Sure. Um, can, can you just quite clearing your cache and doing it in incognito or something? Yeah, sometimes that happens. It's definitely something which we'll have to pay attention to. Um, uh, the other thing is, I think we only have five minutes left in this meeting, so. Right, okay. Okay, here's Chrome incognito. Okay, sweet. Oops. Yeah. Here. Yeah, there you go. Not yeah, sure. So it's only a Safari issue. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's that's good good info for us to actually try to reproduce it because yeah, when I tried in Chrome and I think it would be in Firefox, I couldn't reproduce this. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I think it's probably like a Safari issue. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um sounds good. Sounds good. Then okay, good deal. Then I'm misremembering. I guess I only wrote down Safari 12. I um, I should have written down that I, I guess I, I should have written down I tested it in Chrome and it's not there or something. So, yeah, so Nikhil, do you have access to Safari? No, not currently. Okay. All right, so this is might be an issue for Garish. 
Sure. Okay. We just have, uh, we've got about three, three minutes left guys. What else, what else do we want to talk about? Subum, I don't know if we got a good issue going for you. Um, one thing, um, I've actually asked Shubham to actually uh, share what he's really trying to do, just to ensure like you know, he's on the right track. Okay. Uh, one of the issues he said was like you know, he tried with the AWS Educate account, um, and he said he was running into trouble, and then he also tried a free tier one. So I think he said he's going to also you know, try another account. But in the meantime, I asked him, it'll be better if he can share what he's trying to do, and maybe you know we can just have a an extra eyes there so that like, you know, we can all be sure that like, you know, that's definitely worth the, uh, worth the effort in, in the direction. Okay. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Well, well Nikhil and Madhav, any other things we should talk about before our time ends? Uh, part of the thing is the account that we're using here this zoom it's a free account so it'll it'll do a hard cutoff after 40 minutes so so we got about two and a half minutes left um, Uh, the, there's still, there's still the need for a new meshery project site. I don't know. I know that I told you guys in the past that meshery.dev has been reserved for that. It's also the case that meshery.io has been reserved for that. Um, so if anyone has, has the itch, if anyone has the desire that that's there's still a need there to create that site i was just quickly looking inside of the layer five site for issues that it has open oh are any one of you guys inclined to write a blog post about Meshery? If you are, um, there's, a, there's a site that, uh, that would love to post it for you. So th think about it. Sorry, I didn't get you. Um, if, you're, if you're inclined to write a, a blog post about Meshery, or about service meshes, um, then I, I've got a place where we can publish that. So it could be a good way of getting your name out there and letting people know what you're working on. Okay, and nice, Nikhil, I'll ping you a couple more details. Well, this is good. So, guys, uh, we got like 30 seconds left. I think we're going to get, uh, get cut off. So, it's good to see you guys halfway through the week. Uh, don't be shy in Slack. Most of you aren't. But, uh, yeah, keep pushing. Nikhil, I got the sense that, uh, that we're going to have to give you a real challenge at some point. We're going to have to give you a tough one. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Cool. Ready for that. <laughs> good. Okay. Very good. Good. Good to talk to you, Subo.